Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to visiting lecture today with Oromia State University as more. Welcome to the Honorable Dr. B. Lemi as an executive director for the leadership development. As for the topic today is leadership is about inspiring. Well, and also welcome to our participant today. Today's session is being listed on the University's Telecom YouTube channel. And now I will read our agenda this afternoon. First, we will start class presentation by Dr. Bekele Lemi. Continue with the Q&A session. And next session is time for picture for documentation. And last time is closing. So we will start for this class today, delivered by Dr. Bekele. Let me, yeah, for Dr. Bekele, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Novita and the team for having me uh, for today's presentation and to share uh, my personal experience and the life I passed through uh, in. Uh, uh, education carer. Um, my today's presentation is uh, focusing on the on leadership. Uh, is about inspiring, um, which I think we inspire uh, your students to uh, their future leadership carer. Um, before I directly delve into my presentation, I will introduce you to uh, your ambassador in Ethiopia, whom I have uh, uh, closed um, a link for almost a year, uh, a Honorable uh, Bushra Bansour, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to, to Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Africa. Um, he has visited our university, Oromia State University, for uh, several times for different purposes. Uh, as you can see, he's standing with our university president, uh, Dr. Garamo Huluka, uh, for different occasions, special. This one is when uh, we were launching uh, one project uh, focusing on training local community use. Um, and also uh, he uh, made a speech, public speech. Ambassador Bushra is a motivator, uh, an inspirer, and uh, uh, he is the best diplomat we have in Ethiopia. Even I visited uh, uh, your embassy in Addis Ababa. Uh, so uh, here you can look at how our staff members, especially management members, uh, stand with the team from Indonesia. Uh, again, um, this is uh, when we launched it with the Indonesian embassy in Ethiopia, uh, with our university uh, opening program for converting water hyacinths into organic fertilizer and handicraft. And in this project, the team from Indonesia came to uh, our university and the South trained uh, more than 20 local community youth. Uh, so, we have close uh, friend is this uh, close relationship with the Indonesian embassy in Ethiopia. This is the opening ceremony with local leaders and Oromia State University staff. I think you you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, so uh, you can see local community in their representatives, university president, honorable uh, ambassador Bushra, uh, standing with the train and our our university staff. And this is the time uh, that we had with him during the training session. Uh, this is a team, 
that came from Indonesia to uh, train uh, local youth on the ICENs, how to how to change ICENs into uh, organic uh, with our university's uh, president. Okay, uh, so having said this, uh, I'm very happy to join you, uh, to introduce myself, share with you my life experiences uh, in this um, academic career. The topic of my context of presentation focus on uh, self-introduction, sharing my personal experience, and then going to see how leadership is about inspiring, uh, focusing on uh, leadership de definition. Uh, when we say leadership is inspiring, what does it mean? Uh, leadership versus position versus size versus place of birth, economic status. And when we say uh, leadership is inspiring, uh, what does it mean? Uh, what contributing factors are there? And lastly, we'll, we'll have a question and uh, a suggestion time. Uh, so the objectives of my presentation is primarily first to expose your students to Oromia State University. As um, I was explaining first, we we have close relationship with the Indonesian embassy. Uh, I my per I personally even visited your embassy in Addis Ababa, la had lunch with them, and and, and also. One, and secondly, to expose myself to the Indonesian uh, students. And this is an opportunity for me uh, to have you in my life. And uh, as I say, to share my personal experiences, thereby motivate the students uh, for their future leadership development. As an introduction, uh, I. I suggest to closely follow up uh, my personal life so that you would you will extract lessons. Uh, as I told you, my name is Bekele Lemmi. Uh, I was born in uh, from the father and mother who are farmers uh, with um, only elementary school, even grade three. And I was born in a very remote rural area of uh, Oromia region. Oromia region is the largest region uh, in Ethiopia, uh, 510 kilometers away from the capital city of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Uh, in poor family with three uh, brothers and four sisters, very large family size. And currently, I am uh, a husband for one wife and father of three children. So uh, I was born, as I said, in a very rural area, a very distant area where uh, there was no uh, school. I used to walk on feet uh, for more than one hour to go to school. Um, uh, and until grade eight, uh, I used to walk on feet day by, by day by day, early in the morning from eight uh, up to evening uh, till four o'clock. Uh, there were different constraints uh, that uh, even would forbid me to quit, to stop my education. Uh, you may, there was no size sufficient food, no clothes at that time. Uh, but come, by overcoming all the challenges I had at that time, just I could finalize grade eight and then uh, went to attend my school in another school, uh, almost 223 kilometers away from my family, 
where I used to rent a house, uh, bake injera local food by myself, and then I used to attend the school. It goes on, and then um, lastly, through by passing through all the challenges, I could join Addis Ababa University for my uh, BA degree in sociology and social anthropology. Uh, when I look back the time I had passed this route, uh, there were challenges that I couldn't even bear, uh, but uh, I was able to uh, pass through all the challenges and uh, join Addis Ababa University for, for my BA degree. And uh, currently, I hold a PhD in federalism and governance studies, uh, M in federalism and local governance, uh, from the same university, university, which is uh, 510 kilometers away from the place where I was born. Uh, so I could join the university that is very esteemed in Ethiopia. Uh, most probably you have uh, information on uh, what about Addis Ababa University in Ethiopia. So uh, rural, uh, rural students uh, rarely join Addis Ababa University as it is prestigious university in our country. Uh, but if you could um, uh, challenge all the obstacles do not give your your do not lose hope in your future career. Uh, from my lesson, I could learn that uh, uh, nothing can forbid you uh, to stop on the way uh, to school. So almost for the last fifteen years, having graduated uh, in BA degree in sociology and social anthropology from Addis Ababa University. I've been engaged in teaching uh, BA and MA students for the last uh, 15 years, uh, public and private universities. Uh, currently, I am a certified trainer and consultant at Romania State University. Romania State University is the only regional university in our country that we have uh, focusing on uh, training leaders uh, and public servants, and also uh, institutional uh, transformation. And uh, position-wise, currently I hold um, executive director for leaders for the leadership development at Oromia State University, where uh, the university is mandated to to train and transform the leadership style. Uh, and uh, the leadership um, uh, uh, content we have in our country, especially in Romania region, which is almost uh, half of the populace, um, which holds half population of the country in, in, in Ethiopia. So when I see where I am today and uh, the life I passed through, uh, especially uh, I could learn that there might be challenges, obstacles, uh, but if uh, you have hope, uh, you have strong uh, decision on your future career, uh, there is nothing that can, can hold you back. Uh, rather, uh, you could, you could uh, uh, challenge and uh, of the status of uh, where I am. There, there are many uh, brothers and the sisters who failed to bear all the challenges and and uh, left their school at elementary, at high school, and uh, even brilliant, very strong uh, students uh, at that time. Uh, but hard working is very important. So, uh, from the outset, uh, I have strong beliefs and the principles by which I guide my, my life. 
And the first one is humanity. Early from my childhood at elementary school, uh, my focus was supporting the needy. When I was at elementary school, I used to collect wood and also organize students to collect wood and sell it uh, so that uh, those students who were from the uh, needy family background could attend their school. And today, since that, uh, I've been engaging in different humanity services uh, for the fact that my principle is that you are the carer of your brother. That is entrenched in the principle of Christianity. You might have your own religious background, uh, but in, in the religion that I, I follow, this, this principle is guiding principle. Uh, you are the, the carer of your brother. You need to uh, love your brother as yourself, and therefore humanity is first for me. Secondly, at, always during my work, I strongly believe in teamwork and uh, uh, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary work activities. Always I encourage and also personally I work in team as um, we have locally saying one wood cannot give you uh, fire, uh, but when you put different words together, it will help you get food. Uh, and uh, at work these days, uh, different activities, different tasks, they demand interdisciplinary um, uh, knowledge, uh, principles, um, uh, theories, and therefore, interdependence is important. The other uh, strong belief I have is always I strive for change. Uh, my, my belief is that we are not born, born uh, destined, being destined people. We are born to evolve. We are born to change our environment, our brothers and sisters, and change cannot come uh, uh, by its own unless and otherwise we work on it. So hard working is important. But what I learned today, when I, I looked back to my, my uh, personal history, the hard working is important unless and otherwise you can easily give uh, hands lose hope uh, so, but if you work hardly, you can overcome challenges and, and, uh, and therefore I always strive to, to, uh, to be in challenges and through work, to, through hard work, uh, to pass through all the challenges. The other, uh, belief and principle I have is, uh, self-development. I always learned, I always read, and also train myself through different mechanisms, hear my experiences and also other experiences. Most of my, my friends are elderly people from whom I learned their life, and also educated professionals, disciplined uh, uh, individuals are to whom I associate myself uh, to share my personal life and also to share their personal life so that uh, I could develop uh, myself. So I always learn, and I told you uh, at the beginning, currently I am a certified trainer and consultant. So where I am is not something simple. Uh, so, Always, I believe in changing myself to change my brother or my sister and my environment. In especially countries like Ethiopia, where I live uh, and the uh, local community where I am, uh, there is no conducive environment ready-made that is given to you. Uh, always, 
uh, economically, politically, even institutionally, there are different lacks, there are different deficiencies. Uh, so if you look at all the challenges, you could lose hope. But if you have strong belief in yourself, uh, you can uh, therefore change yourself and change the environment, including those with whom you work. Uh, so currently I have numerous um, followers whom I guide, whom I mentor, uh, students, many students are there, uh, BA and MA degree, colleagues are there, friends are there, uh, whom I guide and who always follow my footstep uh, so that um, uh, they could also overcome the challenges they, they face personally at family level in their environment and then uh, develop their leadership career. Uh, so uh, for this, I have been teaching uh, different courses for uh, degree and MA students, as I said. Uh, different uh, sociology uh, and related courses uh, and uh, anthropology and other related courses, leadership and change management, public administration, federalism and governance. Uh, so as I told you, as I believe in strong uh, interdisciplinary nature of the course, I've been teaching all the course, all the all these courses, and uh, also facilitated different trainings. Uh, I have been organizing uh, different training modules uh, and also uh, training, facilitating training, uh, primarily uh, adult training, uh, where I have a specialization. Uh, Having taught all these uh, uh, courses, uh, especially in, in my classroom, I have uh, this uh, um, strong skill in classroom management. Basically, my class is always engaging and it is interactive. I always follow a few lecturing but there are a number of activities that I give to my students. And therefore, it's always student-centered uh, teaching method. Many reflections are there. Individual assignment is focused. Group assignment is focused. And always there is a presentation where a student is present what they learn from the case studies, from the individual and the group assignments. So always I follow this student and that approach. Of course, I believe that uh, this is uh, modern, very uh, recent approach we usually uh, utilize in our classroom. So it is always uh, inspirational and awesome my students always uh, get happy. Um, uh, they even students from other classes whom I do not uh, formally uh, or whom I do not teach in other, in other classes, most of the time join uh, my classroom. And uh, the, the strong belief I have is no lazy student in my class. There might be students who lack opportunity, exposure to different to different means. Uh, so there is no lazy student in my class. Uh, students in my class are those with open-minded mindedness, uh, with abil have, having ability to learn, to share their experiences and also to engage in the class in which I usually uh, engage in. So, uh, although it is known that three categories of students are there in classroom, uh, but 
I do not believe in being lazy. No lazy student in my class. Uh, accordingly, I have also assessed where my students are. After their graduation, uh, uh, most of my students are working in major public and private institutions, uh, including uh, higher education, meaning universities, both private and public. There are also many uh, students graduated and then working today in different international and national organizations. Uh, many of them are members of national, regional, and local government cabinets uh, working for their people, uh, working to solve their, their people's uh, economic, social, and political ch challenges. And some of them are members of the national, regional, and local councils, and some that serve as speakers as advisors, uh, political appointees, and policy analysts, as my field uh, mainly focuses on federalism and governance, as I said, uh, and my teaching focuses on public administration. Uh, majority of uh, the majority of my students uh, have joined all these uh, public and institutions. Civil servants are there. Uh, many of them also have opened their own businesses uh, as they were inspired, especially when I hear uh, what they have learned from me during uh, my, class my classroom lecture, personal life, is that they, they tell me they tell me that uh, they have learned many lessons from my personal life my, how i have been influencing them their life for the fact that there is no nothing which is meaningless in my life i give meaning uh, to all my activities during classroom when i encourage when i uh, encourage them when i appreciate them uh, from my facial expression, always I give due concern so that it gives uh, full meaning for for their life. From this, I could learn that leadership is not a position. It is neither about size, nor it is about the place where you are born. Neither it is depending on the economic status that you have. So I can conclude that leadership is about inspiring. As I told you, from my early childhood, through mobilizing students, I used to help students learn, uh, attend their, their schools without um by by buying exercise books pens pencils uh so that they do not quit uh, their 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 education and so time i could learn that always um uh, how it depends uh, how it depended on the position uh there are several leaders politically appointed position, but who do not inspire, who do not influence, uh, but held position for for uh, different purposes, but kids so time without influencing, without bringing different uh, changes to the place where they live, to their community. Uh, so uh, my belief is that it is not about position. And also, it is not about the size we have, being small, being large, or being big, or it doesn't depend on the place we are born. Most people believe that 
being born in urban areas or may be a rich family uh, may give the, uh, the the opportunity to become a leader, strong leader, effective leader. But for me, it doesn't um, imply uh, this one. It depends on your personal uh, personal um, uh, aspiration, uh, personal development, your the vision that you have, the ability that you have to learn, to share, to learn, to share. And also to build trust among the, the people with whom you work. Uh, so influencing is important, inspiring is important. As I said, through my everyday activity, I've been inspiring, influencing with people with whom I work, my students in classroom, and also trainees where I offer uh, uh, where I facilitate training. I always act as leader. I give him a very to my working style to more this to everything in my life. I give meaning to my life, to my words. So a leader is a person who walks front, who walks his words. Sorry for the internet uh, interrupt. Hello? Yes, sir. You can continue for the presentation. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, um, So, uh, as I said, I always act as a leader, and everything is for me. Uh, So leadership is action, it's position. 
uh, as you can see, if you are able to unlock potential that you have, if you do not leave the action, uh, if you leave your life, your wordless, So it is uh, your capability to unlock people's potential. And you need to see how your action influences other, inspires uh, other. Again, uh, as, I've, as, I, as I said, leading means stepping forward, not standing idle. Boldly, you will remove obstacles from the past. Don't give your, your hands. You need to have confidence, uh, confidently walk forward without losing hope. It's not about size. As you can see, the size it is unbelievable. It is imagined that you could be managed, but you have the attitude to move forward, to step forward, not to stop. Uh, it doesn't depend on the size that you have but your uh, attitude. So... Morning, sir. Yeah, can you share your presentation again, your PowerPoint? Thank you. Okay, it's... Is it for... Is it, do you use presentation? Yes. Do you see the slides? Not yet. My slides? Still no. Maybe you can restart screen again, sure. Okay, let me do it again. Let me share it. What about now? No, still no.
What about now? Actually, still not sure. Do you see it now? No. Oh, sorry. Okay, slide in the to Slide in the Better to share less the, the slide. Yeah, I tell him. You can Gafi San Casala, the other cake above sea. Gafi San Casan, if Davy can be it. What about now? The slide is still invisible. Okay. A lot of time. Yes. Just I'm facing challenge in uh, sharing my slides. So yeah. just to conclude, to conclude, I'm going to share my the slides uh, so that you could uh, see. Morning, sir. For Dr. Begele.
Yeah, what is your for your PPT? You can share in my WhatsApp. Oke, okay, maksudnya. Halo, Novita. Yes, please share your presentation and share in my WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already shared it. It is in WhatsApp. Just a moment. Oh, I still not receive. Please check your WhatsApp. Still no share. Maybe your your file presentation still loading. What about you? It's very clear, sir. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. I'm really sorry for the interruption. These are the challenges about which we are talking, but we do not give hands to the challenges always. Uh, we strive to overcome them. And in countries where I am, Uh, in the local community in which I am, the internet con uh, connection itself is interrupted at any time, uh, but we still work. So uh, with this, I want to focus on what leadership is. Uh, just it is a, the ability to influence others, and this influencing might be with or without authority. Uh, we might have assigned authority like unit leader or department head or executive director for the leadership development where I am uh, or 
uh, we might not be assigned, uh, but emergent leaders because of uh, different reasons like effective communication, uh, verbally we might be active, uh, we might be informed, uh, seeking others' opinion, initiating new ideas, being fair, uh, and receive different comments. Uh, so uh, leadership is about influencing others, uh, whether we have authority or do not have authority doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> leadership is a function of three elements of inter interpersonal effectiveness, awareness, ability, and commitment. They all together contribute to the leadership in terms of interpersonal effectiveness. So we must have an honest understanding of who we are, what we know, and what you can we can do. These are very three uh, very important. Who are we? What do we know? What do we do not know? Or what we can or what we cannot. These are very important. They all contribute together to our interpersonal uh, communication and interpersonal effectiveness. Uh, whom we are, we need to be honest, we need to be candor, loyal or professional in our everyday activity, communication with others, working with others. This is what I have built so far in my life in my career development to become where I am now. Uh, so knowing oneself is important. Consistency is important. Persistence is important. And the other is, and I, I should know whom I am. For our leadership career uh, development, we need to know who we are, our service, weaknesses and strengths, organization, in which we are assigned to work, jobs for which we are assigned to, to work, human nature, and leadership factors. Uh, these are all important and we need to know them. Again, we need to know what we can do. That is, uh, can we provide direction? coordinate, communicate, supervise, evaluate, or build moral, train, coach, mentor, others. Which one we can do, we need to clearly understand. Uh, awareness is our state of consciousness, uh, our ability to recognize ourselves, recognize others, events and situations in real time. This is very important. Giving recognition, uh, some people abandon about themselves, about others, and situations in which they are, they do not give clear meaning, are not well aware of them. So they are constrained due to this one. Awareness is also our ability to assess the impact of actions, on the situations in which we operate, we function, or the situations impact upon uh, our actions. So we need to be well aware of what our actions uh, have, the effect it, it has on others, on the situation, whether the, the situation is changing or it, by itself changing or changing our action. Again, awareness is about development process that is uh, about experience, about communication, self-discovery and feedback. These are very important. We need to be well aware of on, on these issues. Again, ability to lead is a function of the ability to communicate. So, this communication could, could be about 
your vision about your goal, about your organization, about the team, or about the task for which you are assigned to work, ability to, to resolve conflicts. Conflicts are inevitable in organizations, might be intra conflicts personally, inter interpersonal conflicts, intergroup or organizational. So you need to lead uh, conflicts especially in resolving them as we cannot avoid conflicts. Again, uh, leadership is about the ability uh, to resolve problems, make decisions. Decision uh, is important and the ability to give decision is uh, one of the skills that a leader should develop in his or her leadership career. The other important element is commitment, uh, which is a uh, function of recognition that once decisions make a difference, and this difference could be positively or negatively, or it is any attempt to resolve a problem that might have a deci decided negative impact on um, some while that is problems uh, that could negatively affect your organizational development, uh, achievement, your goal, your vision. Uh, again, we need to work on a knowing scenario, uh, but we need to make a still harder decision, take risk. A leader is a person, an influencing person, who still makes hard decision in a knowing scenario. Uh, there are many, several times when even I decided to walk through midnight in Wolves in very dark environment in order to pursue my education. Uh, I had real experience uh, in my life, whether to go through and pursue that dark environment or to go back uh, to my parents' home and leave it. So finally, I used it to decide when such uh, scenario, such situation happens, uh, I used it to make hard decision to take risk and today, even on the position where I am, there are uh, several times when such a uh, scenario could happen, but still I'm making uh, decisions, taking risk, and leadership is about taking risk. The other important thing is leadership is uh, about all these factors. It is ability, it is a skill, it is behavior, it is relationship, it is trade, it is influencing uh, process. And therefore, we need to take care of uh, all these issues. Uh, as a skill, we need to decide, we need to communicate. As ability, we need to influence others. As behavior, we need to lead. As relationship, we need to take care of uh, every relationship we develop uh, with our partners, with our colleagues, our friends, uh, and through all this, uh, we influence uh, them. We influence them uh, through stepping ahead. Always we need to step ahead and it could be easier, very few steps. But at the same time, during influencing, we need to watch our our followers are, they can have different um, uh, features, characteristics, interests, uh, but we need to specially value their interests, what they have and what they do not have. Their interests, their discontents, uh, the challenges they face. 
especially in transformation and leadership, one of the four eyes is individualized consideration where we need to clearly identify who our followers are. And especially organizations we lead, our followers might be alienated followers who are capable, who are strong, who are educated, but is still refusing to engage in our decision, in planning, in the activities we usually uh, give them to perform. Or they might be passive followers or very excellent followers, but still it is the leader himself or herself who is responsible to influence him, to influence her, and then by his uh, goal, his vision into the followers. Uh, what I want to comment here is that leaders do not work always to have many followers, but they work always uh, to create leaders. Leaders work to create leaders, not followers. In our life, we need to be also exemplary. Our life our action, our words, wearing style, uh, timing, uh, giving direction. In all our lifestyle, we need to live exemplary life so that people will be influenced. The other is leaving our message. If you have come across, several people are, uh, they do not um, leave their words. Beliefs and actions should be lined up. Through this all, we can we can influence, as I said. Again, we need to uh, enable others to, to do to, by empowering them, as you can see from this picture. Uh, the father is there, so he is taking care of uh, enabling his child to his future carer, and this is uh, the life that we all are passing through, including you. I passed through this all. I came to uh, where I am today through my father, uh, and my father uh, could be taken as uh, the enabling person. Uh, again, I would like to intro introduce you to the uh, very influential and uh, inspiring uh, leaders in this world. Uh, you know the Mandela, how he was modeling the way, especially in South Africa. Uh, as I've been saying, leadership is not mainly about position, it is about influencing. Uh, you might have, as we all know, uh, there are several positioned leaders assigned to different positions, but have left without contributing, without leaving their legacies to this wallet. But if you look at Mandela, he the first to stand up uh, for his belief, to give effect to deal with things, challenges, uh, and that took that risk in order to ch challenge um, the relationship between the white and the black in South Africa uh, uh, through reconciliation and finalized the relationship. And today, South Africa is the leading economically developed country in Africa. Uh, you, we can have also in our country uh, modeling uh, mothers who have this encouraging art, uh, heart, uh, supporting and caring for others. Uh, so uh, we need to think all uh, on how we are working with others. Uh, you know about uh, how leaders should inspire uh, having a vision that inspires others, attract uh, that envision attractive that features, understand others' hopes and fears, impress enthusiasm for the vision, believe in the vision. Uh, so leaders are this way. Uh, what contributes for my today's leadership and the lesson I, I learned with uh, contributing factors, if you see, education is important, we need to learn. Communication skill is important. Our physical appearance is important uh, for leadership to be inspiring. 
it uh, should be smart uh, with whom we spend our time and where we spend our time is also the other important uh, factor we need to plan ourselves we need to be open mindedness and have courage we need to always have winning mind uh, in myself i don't have this defeated mind uh, i always think about the next ladder Today I am. I might be uh, working. Uh, I'm. Uh, I am working here, uh, but I'm not confined to be here. I still think about the future. Uh, always, I have this excellent uh, lion mind. So, my practical experience also you have uh, come across uh, show that it is about attitude. There are different uh, turnovers in leadership. Had it been positioned. But that doesn't mean that position is insignificant. Uh, if you are positioned, uh, it legitimizes our authority, our decision, so so that we can we can fully exercise our personal uh, uh, our personal uh, leadership style. So we need to clear clearly utilize both sources of power, personal and uh, positional powers. We need to also aspire and inspire in our everyday life uh, because we are elite, we are leaders. We need to also use, utilize feedback, especially under 60 principle, where we need to get comments from all people around us. Again, we need to also balance our life and the work so that uh, we will be effective. Finally, I would like to conclude uh, saying that what we think we are, what we think we are, and therefore, if you think you are a leader, you can be a leader. And what we think we are is composed of all these four factors. The first one is thought. What we think determines what we believe. I have already told you my beliefs, my principles. So I always think to be a leader and therefore that thinking determines my principles my thoughts, again, my belief is what we believe determines how we feel. So our feeling also depends on what we believe. And then this leads us to our action. The way we feel influences how we are going to act. And leaders are peoples of actions they walk the talk. They do not look back only for lessons. They do not give, do not lose hope, but always work on the future ladder. So we cannot, we cannot live a positive life with negative mind. We need to tell to ourselves that we can. Yes, we can. Positive attitude should be developed so that we could be able to influence others. We could be able to develop our leadership style. Thank you so much for uh, attending my presentation. I would like to also apologize for the interruptions. Uh, uh, thank you very much. If there are comments, if there are suggestions I'm okay uh, to respond to also accept your comments. Okay, thank you for answering. And we have question from two students in the Zoom chat. Sure. sure. This is invisible from your side. I'm really sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, uh, we, okay, thank you for your person. I know is it clearly? Clara. 
you can you can hear my question of course now okay. yes yeah, thank you and we have two question from participant in the zoom chat this is invisible from your sister okay i will read first for mr miskinan what strategy can leader employment to consistently inspire and motivate their team member fostering a cultural where individuals are driven to excel and contribute their best effort? Thank you. Would you mind repeating once? Oh, I'm, if, I'm ready also right in the room chat, sir. Maybe you can check it from chat of Zoom. You think the strategy I use to inspire others? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I have been talking in my present during my presentation, the prime uh, strategy I utilize is the life I live. I give due meaning to all actions, uh, to my words, to my wearing style, uh, and I always plan my, plan my life uh, and also act as a leader. I am always a leader. And therefore, this is my prime strategy through which I influence others. During communication, when I, I am talking with others, uh, I give due meaning to my life uh, so that people usually get attracted to my words, they get attracted to my wearing style, my walking style. Uh, that means I'm modeling the way. I'm modeling the way, uh, exemplary uh, life, especially respecting others, giving uh, values to my followers. Uh, the, so um uh, there is nothing which is meaningless in my life through this i usually influence others if i have got your question okay, thank you for answering and then we have questions from miss paulina could you provide example of you can hear my voice okay yeah okay and the next question is from miss paulina could you provide example of how leader can cultivate a cultural of inspiration within their team, fostering an environment where individuals are not just motivated to achieve objective, but are also inspired to innovate, collaboration, and exit expectation? Thank you. Uh, still, I'm sorry, I'm not clear with uh, your your voices. Uh, where? Oh uh, yeah, maybe you can read in the room chat, sir. From question from Miss Paulina, if my voice is not clear, clearly. May I repeat the question from uh, yeah, the text you. of? Okay, let me help okay. you once. The question, the question is just, could you provide? Could you, could you provide examples of how leaders can cultivate a culture of inspiration within their teams, uh, fostering an environment where individuals are not just motivated to achieve objectives, uh, objectives, but uh, are also inspired to innovate collaborate and exceed expectations. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, still long question uh, to capture uh, examples uh, where we can foster uh, an inspiration in team. Uh, this is a central question, the central point I took from the question. Um, I myself could be an example, uh, as I said, uh, I always uh, believe in teamwork and uh, in teamwork, at least eight uh, skills are there. 
and I don't know if you have read uh, role theory, uh, especially uh, if we all watch uh, soccer, I mean uh, football games or, or handbook or whatever, uh, it is composed of uh, diff different uh, skills. One is midfielder, the other is striker, the other is uh, goalkeeper, and an extra. Uh, the most important thing is who is the most important and the less important. All of them are important. If there is no striker in the team, there is no one who could uh, score goal. If at the same time, a striker leaves his place or her place and start working, uh, starting the, the role of goalkeeper, you know what, what would happen to him or to her. The, the team will be defeated. Or if the goalkeeper leaves his place, his role, and then uh, uh, and uh, goes to uh, score goal, uh, goal for the team, again, uh, the goal will be defeated as it, it will be easy for, for the opposite team to score goal on him or uh, on the team. So uh, through this, what we could see is the coach. The coach, even though he is not of the 11 team members, but still he is a motivator. He is the inspirer. And also who knows tactic and strategy uh, to make the team win the game. One of the tactics could be when to change the bench, whom to change, the time he or she, um, uh, the time uh, that is appropriate to change. So through this, he or she can, can uh, foster uh, skill and so that by influencing uh, at the end, he, he or the team uh, will be the winner. If I've clearly understood, understood uh, the question. Okay, thank you. And then the next question from Mr. Rossi. What role do you believe inspiration play in effective leadership? And how can leaders actively cultivate an environment that foster inspiration among team members, ultimately leading to greater engagement, productivity, and success? Thank you. Uh, let me begin from the last statement, the success of the team. Team success is a success for all uh, team members. Yes. If you see if 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 you see the the winning team, the winning team once uh, they win uh, the the opposing the opposite team, they all uh, become happy together, and we do not attribute uh, the success to one of the team members. All the team members have shared. Uh, uh, the challenges and also uh, the attitude at the same time, uh, they all have contributed for the team to win uh, the game. Um, if I don't know if I've captured your question, but the success of the team is, is the success of the team. So they are happy together. They will be rewarded together. But that doesn't mean uh, team members do not have also their own uh, uh, share. Still, uh, there could be differences based on their contributions. But still, it depends on the role that, that, that they are assigned to play. What I would like to suggest here is, especially in team building, we need to think about whom to bring together uh, during team composition. Uh, one, the principle is that there are several uh, people in the market to bring, 
But the, the difficult one is building a strong and winning team. How to, for example, uh, uh, because of their educational background, because of their cultural background, gender, gender differences, personal preferences, personal perspectives, team leader should work to bring, to foster uh, this strong spirit, coherence, uh, build team for the same goal. So we can have uh, individuals in the market to come and work with us, but the difficult one is how to uh, bring a team spirit among team members. Uh, there are five, as you all know, there are five stages of team development. Uh, some teams are ended at the first stage, at forming stage, the second one at norming stage, or maybe at conflict stage. But the, our always uh, goal should be uh, to build strong and winning stage, where even if they get dispersed, they will uh, remember each other. Meaning, uh, uh, we call it adjourning stage, the last stage. Please, I would like to advise you to read the formation of team, lead, uh, team uh, development. Okay, thank you for answering. I think it's very clear answer from Professor Ra. Okay, before I close this event, for all participants, please open your camera. I will take a picture on the cone of three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Thanks, Manil. Thank you. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Finally, we come to the end of my webinar visiting lecture today. We would like to thank you for all the speaker for the wonderful information and sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for, for all participants. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future with Romia State University from Ethiopia, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, okay. The visiting lecture for today and here. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. And have a nice day. Thank you so much for Dr. Bekele. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a nice time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you again.